Hi, my name's Kathy Miller, and this week we're looking at a muddy track. Quite a wet one. How are we going to do that? The real world has some amazing examples of muddy paths and roads, and you just need to get out there and Google it, look on any image site, or even just take your camera and go out and about, and you'll find some great examples for you to model. So this is my O-scale diorama. Um, it's got the weir, waterfall, um, I haven't decided what I'm doing at the end here, but in the meanwhile, I've just added on this track. And this track here, it's a bit of a muddy path track. It's O-scales with a little bit more detail, how would you produce that, put the grass on, and end up with this result? So my secret ingredient for this road or track is, wait for it, chinchilla dust. Seriously, it's, it's a little large in HO scale, it's great in O scale. It's got the nice gravel effect that you're looking for, and it's very even, doesn't have any shiny bits in like sand. Get some of it out, and you can actually see what it looks like. So there's a, um, a sort of granularity to it. And don't worry about what colour it is, that can all change. And I'm just going to put it on here so um, that I've got it along where I want my path to be. It doesn't really matter how deep it is or even if it goes up to the rest of your scenery. So this is my gravel path area. I'm just going to put it in and I'm going to use a brush. Here's a fine one just to get it up to the edge. Now. It's going to come off the edge, it always does, so just be warned of that and not too worried. Like most um, gravel paths, sort of roads, it'll have a sort of two wheel width apart, flatter bits where the tyres go and press it down, and then it'll have a hump in the middle. So I'm just going to smooth this off a bit. Okay, so what we then need to do is get our vehicle out and just run it along. So we know just how big we want our path to be apart. Now, I'm going to do the sort where there's a nice flat section. And for that, you probably actually want the spoon and you just want to flatten this out. Because that's the, going down that is the middle, that's the section where the tyres will run and they'll smooth it down so it's nice and flat. Okay, turning this into something looking good is now just a case of a little bit of titivating. I use a selection of brushes, the bigger the better at the beginning. I don't want a nice even surface, I want a bit of an evenness, but it has to look realistic. So I smooth the lower sections out and roughened up the top sections. What I will do is I'm going to run this along one more time, quite lightly, just to give a kind of a um, the odd pattern into here, so it does look a little bit um, used. There we go, that's my path. Now this bit here and this bit here, they're actually some bigger um, uh, sort of rocks and, and pebbles, they build up quite frequently. So this is the time to get out something like Woodland Scenics Talus. The talus comes in a number of grades, I used fine here, probably extra fine would have been as good. You just need to clear any that falls into the wheel ruts. Now at this point, a good sleaze and all your precious work is on the floor. So I sprayed it with a mix of isopropyl and alcohol, probably about 30% isopropyl, 70% alcohol. Next up, I dribbled on some dilute white glue. This is probably a little bit overly dilute if I'm honest, but I've been using tile grout and that's needs of a dilute glue to throw through it. So I normally do about 30% white glue to 70% water. Drip it on, flood it, make sure there's plenty of glue on there to hold your chinchilla dust. So it's dried overnight and it's cracked. These things happen. Um, the rocks looked a little um, stuck on the surface anyway, so a little bit more chinchilla dust won't go amiss. The next stage is to put a finer layer of dust on because this is, this is quite large in this sort of section and it's cracked a bit still. Hmm, well, these things happen. So the next level will be to put some grout on. Yeah, I do love my grout. I think it's just a bit too fine for this sort of road in um, sort of 
O, which is what this is. In HO, it probably could work. So I'm just going to put a little bit on my cracks and then I'm going to put a little strip along my um, actual roadway. So there we go. And then all you need is a brush to brush it into place. I made sure I didn't put so much on that I lost the texture of the chinchilla dust. It's just there to fill in the gaps. And I left more in the dips so I could get some wheel ruts in a minute. I then I smoothed the wheel rut area with my finger before running my Jeep through it to get a lovely tire print effect. That's my Jeep done. So the next stage is another layer of this and my glue. So this is IPA and alcohol. Now the more cunning amongst you might be noticing that um, the colours are different. That all gets sorted on the next stage. I'm just going to let it run for a minute or two to just let it drain out this end. Um, if you leave your glue standing on places like this, it can just end up a bit shiny. I know we're going to paint it, but this is just normal glue and I don't really want that. So I'm going to let it run all the way to this end and then I'm going to mop it up with a bit of tissue. Well, I'm out in my garage. This is my nice little spray booth. Now, I'm going to spray my path to all match. And the observer debunks you will notice it still looks quite dark. And that's because I haven't actually let it dry. I'm spraying acrylic onto it. I'm not too worried about things drying too much. So I've got a brown here, which is the colour that I'm going to use for this path. It more or less matches in. Um, I could put a little bit of a darker, this is an olive drab in, a little bit of a darker colour, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to see how it looks with this. And I'll probably get the variety in tying in with washes and other things. And why am I painting it? I'm painting it because I'm worried that I can't get all these disparate to tie in, especially these white talus, and I need them all to look the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the near bit, I'm going to use my hand just to stop it going down the river when I get to the far side, and I'm going to twist this round. What I'm going to do now is just lighten the um, ruts slightly, because those ruts are normally made up of slightly lighter um, mud, finer mud, so I'm, I'm not sure on light mud colours, this is just wooden deck tan. Okay, so my paint's dried, you can see it's just slightly lighter along the section there. And mm, what I'd normally do at this stage is just add a few little bits of pigment down this central, just to give it the dustier texture that you need. Now, this is just MIG City Dust industrial city dirt. It's my favourite mig colour if I'm honest. I use it on most things but I do find it has the odd white little bit in it which is a bit frustrating. So I just brush it on. So you could stop now. It's a perfectly acceptable road. If it's dry on your diorama or layout then that'd be great. You can wheel your um, vehicle along, it's fine. If like me and you're actually looking for a slightly wetter look then you can do that with, well, you can go look at one of my videos on how to do puddles. You could do it with a bit of resin. You can do it just though with um, gloss varnish and just drip it in. Because what we're looking for is actually just the, the effect of water, which as we, we've seen is often just about the colour change. So I'm just going to put a few bits in. So this is just Vallejo gloss varnish. Um, Vallejo is my go-to for most paint. Um, after Tamiya, depending on what I'm doing. So there's a bit of just a gloss in there. Does that look like the lowest bits? And I'm just going to get a brush. This is just a wet brush. I'm just going to tease it around. So this is mostly dry and I'm not happy that it looks a bit streaky down the middle. It just looks a little bit too. So I'm just going to go in and add a little bit more and use a bit of water and spread it out to the side. So, my muddy path is um, dry. You can see it's stained, there's a bit of water, a bit of just dampness through. And what I want to do now is put a lot of grass on because in my experience of these types of roads, there's a lot of grass. I'm just gonna use my knock grass master. I've actually done a video on how to do static grass. So if you want to see how I'm gonna do it, um, I'll fast forward through it now, but go look at that video too. So here's a quick canter through static grass. First of all, I put down some white glue. I just used normal PVA tacky glue. It's a little bit thicker sometimes. 
and then I used a wet brush just to squeeze it around, spread it over the surface. I used my Knock Grass Master with a mix of grass, mostly knock, but all sorts that get thrown in there. But it's important to have a mix of heights and colours or it just looks really blur, like it's a mown lawn. Finally, I um, hoovered it off. Really important to hoover. I can't stress how important it is to hoover because without that, your grass gets stuck to all kinds of places. It just seems to stick to everything. And the hoover also pulls it upright again, which is really important because you want your grass to look upright. So this is the final result. Um, you can see there's the, the water in my track. There's the, um, the sort of spreading of that colour through. Um, I did stop at one point, um, and you could stop on the dry track earlier in my technique if you didn't want to put the water on. And um, we added some grass and I've just added a bit of scenery around to start tying it all together. I will admit I had the resin out for something else. So I put a couple of drops on just to add a little bit more depth of water before I took the final photos. This week on the Mini Cathy's, O-Scale Cathy has a deadly encounter with a hoover. O-Scale Cathy here. And just in case you can't tell what scale I am. Hey, Brother Jane. Oh. Hey. Anyway. <sighs> well, it's me path. My path. Well, it's actually a gravel road, really, isn't it? It's not like gravelly. It's more muddy. I don't know what you'd really call it, really, but it's a road. Yep. And I have to say, a bit like HO Cathy last week, it's a road, how exciting. So, instead of boring you with the road thing, could yeah, it's a road. Like I said, I'm going to tell you about one of my adventures. Yep, I am. So, I nearly got hoovered up. Oh, it was traumatic. It was traumatic. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I can't even talk about it, really. Thankfully, thankfully, I was a little bit big for the nozzle, so I was able to grab on, but it was horrendous. seems to have survived unscathed. But what will she be up to next week? Tune in and find out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode with my track. Um, if you are, then subscribe to me on YouTube. Alternatively, like me on Facebook, Cathy Millet Modelling, or on my website, cathymillet.co.uk. And if you've got any comments, I'd love to hear them in the space below.